Unimat motor is dead. Well, it's uh, it's not irreparable because everything could be repaired, but it's gone. It's uh, non financially repairable. So, at the moment, I have this thing. This is a 100 watt electric motor which will replace it for the time being and I'm looking for another larger motor we'll need to make a bracket for this to fit we're going to be using this 310 3 millimeter thick stainless steel Now these things, you know, are fairly hard to break these bridges, but sometimes, just, you know, <laughs> matter of will. Right, so we have a basic setup. Let me We've got a match, and that's the important part. So I just wanted to show you something in case you get into such a such an issue. And the answer is, if possible, cheat. What do I mean? I have to secure the screws. I'm guessing you're already seeing the answer. I got a magnet to hold the nut, and then these would not move. And all I had to do was, ah, out you go get the screws to line up so since the nuts lined up all I had to do was put the screws and lock them right so we got this fairly fairly good I'd say it's not that bad could be worse I'm going to I released these already the the bottom one was released also and now I'm going to lock these from behind basically uh, speaking I'm going to pull these right so that's about it don't need much more than that this is fairly solid that's good enough now i need to lock these back we'll do that this way thank goodness for needle nose pliers hey eh, guys now what i want to do now is to adjust the belt we're spot on and this is my favorite speed and it looks good okay so the lab has a new motor so the moment of truth is here do we get to see this motor running 
Do we get to see the lathe running? Okay, let's see. So I'm, I'm really pleased with the motor, but it, it won't do. We'll have to sort this issue. So the motor is going to be flipped. I'm going to put it on the other side from here, like that. So I cut these two offcuts. Let's put them in the jaws one at a time. Right, all we need to do is face and drill. Two small issues. Let me take a six and a half millimeter drill bit and show you the issues one if the rotary spindle is going this way you can drill because the twists are going that way but if it's going the wrong way it's just gonna scrape do nothing two this is going the right way it's cutting wrong the wrong way like I'm showing you now it's not gonna cut anything again it's going to scrape so that's not something you want simple solution sure flip it but now we're way way below let me take another tool and show you we're way below the center we're turning over here cutting over here so we need something to raise the whole setup. Sure, I could find a washer and a longer nut and stuff like that, but I think it's a good excuse to use something I've had for many, many years now and never had the chance to actually use it. So let's get this tool out of the way. And get this in. And when I got the lathe, I actually knew nothing about turning, about lathes, about milling. I've been making machines for many, many years, but I had to improvise them all, which was fun. But, um, well, what is this thing? <laughs> actually, it's a turret. It's a, it's a rest. It's a tool rest. You can put tool rests in it, and you can position it. And the washer is actually a locking system when you have something in there so the washer rides on the threading here and let's do a, a mock-up to to turn to, to to actually to do some facing we'll need this tool which is used for turning usually flipped upside down it's going to be used for facing I'm going to space it I'm going to need a space for it with another tool this is the locking nut. I'm going to position them like so and lock with the washer underneath. One second there. There we go. Washer locked. Angle locked. These are thoroughly locked. And we can now adjust the height using this method. Okay, this uh, foot pedal, by the way, sucks. I'm going to definitely switch it to a switch. <laughs> okay, that's pretty nice. So we need to drill and we're going to be using our brand new tool rest.
going to be its first really operative task. But before we do that, we need to make sure this is running true. Okay, let's stick with this and we'll see. And we are on the zero. So we're totally parallel with the chuck, with the spindle actually. Right, next up, we need to get it parallel and centered. And now what we're going to do is we're going to just to center it, more or less. Now I know we're on the height because the, this chuck was used to drill these holes, so it's centered height. I'm going to eyeball it to the center and call it good enough. Okay, eyes on, meaning these, and here we go. Now oh, it's going to be a slow drill. I think we've established one thing. This setup is working wonderfully, but this motor is way too weak. We need a bigger one, a better one, a stronger one, so we can actually fully use this. Okay, so basically what we're going to do, we're going to drill by hand. I don't have any choice right now. running in the right direction this time the lathe is back online I'm really happy this time it's turning in the right direction which makes me extremely happy two things I need to do one is get rid of the pedal which is horrible in my point of view and I'm going to stick this uh, let me see if you guys can see that I'm going to stick this over here the switch I mean like on off this is not uh, too dangerous. This is a good location, far enough from the spindle. It should work quite nicely. Well, that is it. It's working. It's up and running. I'm really, really happy about it. I'm really happy it's now not in decommissioned state, which really, really annoyed me. And uh, we're up again to make new things interesting toys slugs i want to make many many things so thank you guys for watching hope you enjoyed have a nice day and i'll be seeing you